even lobotomies where they would remove part of your brain thinking that somehow that would make you better. Down this end at the bottom just to the left would have been the entrance uh, where the, the bodies would be brought down from the asylum. I almost get the impression, Jeff, that there is something quite close. So we've come back to this area, which was where we captured the voice of a child. It has been several years, and with more reports of paranormal activity, we return to the Cane Hill Death Tunnels. More commonly known as the Causton Deep Shelter, these tunnels were linked to the Cane Hill Asylum that has now been demolished. Through these tunnels, hundreds of dead bodies were taken out of the hospital for burial, out of sight of the patients that once lived inside the asylum. Cane Hill Asylum was designed by Charles Henry Howell and it was built in two stages between 1882 and 1888. The asylum took in a large number of old discharged mentally ill servicemen during the First World War, the earliest patient recorded being admitted in 1915. For over a hundred years, Britain's mentally ill were hidden from society in these vast Victorian asylums. In the last decades, psychiatrists tried to cure as well as care for patients, but some of their attempts were barbaric. Many of the patients inside these asylums were locked up for no psychiatric reason and they became a dumping ground for people that were unwanted by their own families. Many patients underwent terrible procedures such as electric shock therapy and most of these procedures were done without any anaesthetic.
One former procedure was most drastic than all the others, the lobotomy. Some doctors believed that by removing sections of the brain itself, certain serious mental disorders could be permanently treated. It was then discovered that this procedure was of no benefit to any of the patients and it was then phased out in the 1950s. By the late 1980s, the number of patients had greatly declined, largely due to the recommendations of the Mental Health Act with its emphasis on care in the community. Cane Hill closed its doors in March 1992 and the asylums were now closed forever. They were the homes to over 150,000 people. They had outlived the ideals of Victorian architects and too often became the dustbins of humanity. The hallways and wards that were once full of patients, a total of 2,170, were now empty. Throughout the derelict hospital, equipment and even patients' personal belongings were left behind. On the 13th of November 2010, a fire took hold on the iconic administration block. The fire went on to destroy all but the front facade of the building. Demolition began in 2008 and finished two years later. Construction has been underway for many years for family homes to be built now that the asylum no longer exists. The tunnels were used as a public shelter during World War II. It was then part of a tunnel system that was used by Cox Hargreaves Limited, who specialised in the manufacturing of optical lenses for telescopes. From a horticulturist dream world to this uncultivated, rather depressing stretch of countryside. Not far from London, but to all intents and purposes in the middle of nowhere, even the most top secret activities could pass unnoticed. Hearing about this hidden underground rendezvous, we laid in wait for our mysterious early morning caller and grimly determined, followed him. It had occurred to us that this must be a cunningly concealed wartime air raid shelter. But the war had been over for 15 years. And what was that suspicious looking object the stranger was carrying? However, although this is the most unusual sight we've ever encountered for a factory, there's quite a simple explanation. The work carried out here is so precise that a constant temperature is necessary. And in this underground shelter, it never varies winter or summer. Neither is there any mystery about the work itself. 
The men here belong to a Coolsden Surrey firm which manufactures telescopes. The round object we saw being brought in was, of course, a mirror. The construction of a telescope can take as long as 18 months, that is, apart from the giant ones, which naturally take longer. So we're only showing a small section of the work during which a 20-inch mirror is finally polished. Men like Frederick Hargreaves here are used to working to such microscopic limits that the degree of error on the mirror's concave area can never be more than 1 20th of a wavelength of sodium light. Or, to the layman, 1 2 millionth of an inch. The telescope, as we know it, hasn't changed very much since the days of Newton, having a primary concave mirror and a secondary reflector. And although much of the public's imagination has been captured recently by the radio telescope, their uses and consequent value are quite separate and complement each other. At this stage, incidentally, the silver compound is added to the polished glass. If it's just a looking glass you're after, this is obviously not the place to come. Mirrors like these reflect the dreams of all those who look to the heavens for the future of mankind. The company closed its business in 1978 and the tunnels were then sealed by the local council. Since that day, reports of voices, footsteps and loud noises are heard coming from inside the tunnels and we were sent a film showing of teenagers entering inside and as they do they see a figure come running towards them which sends them into a panic and running for the way out yeah yeah i shouldn't have not watched oh, We investigated this location where we would also capture the paranormal activity that has been reported. And people are looked after properly, or well, they should be anyway. Okay, you coughed. To a waiting car or truck to take you to be buried? Do you remember that journey? So many people feel like that. And don't talk about it. If that's how you feel, more movement coming from up there, isn't there? Is there anybody down there? What was that? It was a from behind us somewhere. Or perhaps a child? So here we are, back at the Cane Hill Death Tunnels. It's, uh, it's been some time since we've been back here, but uh, we've heard that reports uh, of paranormal activity is still going on here. So um, myself and Phil, we've come back to the location uh, to see if we can capture any more evidence. Um, it's absolutely freezing outside, but inside these tunnels, it stays at a com constant temperature. So um, it's actually quite mild in here. So what we're going to do, we're going to have a, a little walk through uh, to see what's changed since, uh, since all that time ago when we was here. And uh, then we'll be setting up and uh, doing an investigation and see what we can capture. I, uh, 
I remember this bit here, Phil. Um, this is where we heard a child's voice. Um, it was in this exact location. And I think, uh, if I remember correctly, the child was saying, can you hear me? And there was uh, footsteps. Now, where that child come from and why that child is here, I can only guess it was actually from the hospital. Perhaps she died of some sort of disease or something back in them days and she was brought through here. This, uh, this little room just through here, we've located some old maps and um, this is what is known, or was known, as the sick bay. So there's just a small room just there, just at the bottom. And I guess I take it that was used during the war. If anyone fell ill, I take it, you know, this was a, also used as a World War II shelter. So there would have been a sick bay there and also for the workers of the uh, uh, Cox and Hargreaves optical lens manufacturers that used to do lens for telescopes, um, which we're going to go to now. Um, there's still there's still a lot of equipment left in there. Um, and as you can see, there's uh, kids come down here all the time and the walls are spray painted. There's bottles, there's all sorts of things. Even, even just down there, you can see where they've um, been drinking, lighting little fires. So there is, there's quite a lot of rubbish and stuff down here. Which makes it good for us, I suppose, because if anyone does try and come in here, we're going to hear them. There's only one entrance, only one way in, one way out. Um, and you can't move in here without making a noise. Um, so, OK, let's go to where the optical lens manufacturing took place, which is further back down here. So this is where it used to take place and I believe uh, when we were here last time Phil was uh, where we captured a shadow figure passing between uh, yourself and Mark. Did you hear something there, Phil? I did, you not
What was it? What was it you yeah. think you heard? No, I thought it was just a bang or a movement of some description. It's really weird. So this part here would have been where the where the bodies were brought down from the hospital. Now some say there was it carried on as a ramp up to the basement of the hospital next to the mortuary. Um, it seems I don't know. It looks like it's been filled in with chalk. But it's funny the way the brickwork is uh, cut out on the top, that uh, maybe there might have been a lift that come down from the hospital, which is above us. We have our static cams in place. Static cam one is in the central middle tunnel. Static Cam 2 is in the main entrance tunnel. Static Cam 3 is in the rear tunnel north. We start off the investigation in the central middle tunnel. Okay, we've returned to the uh, Cane Hill Death Tunnels. We were here quite some time ago and um, there's been various reports since we were last here of more paranormal activity. So we thought we'd come back. Now last time we did a session where I'm standing now, we I heard some coughing. We heard somebody cough. And uh, I think from memory we also received uh, a voice as well, an EVP. So I'd like to do the same again really. So I'm going to start off by asking any spirits which are in these tunnels to come and join us. We'd like to talk to you. We'd like to find out more about the history of this place. And also more about you. Now my name is Phil and my colleague standing opposite me is Jeff. Could you tell me your name please? Now I remember these tunnels as a child. I grew up in this area and at the time the hospital that was above us was still in operation. And as a child I remember sometimes patients from the hospital would be out walking around the streets and as a child it could be quite scary because many of them had mental health problems. Now at the time, and during the life of this hospital, right from the Victorian times I believe, people were put in here that were considered mad. 
Now often, probably more often than not, the people that were called mad weren't. They were people who were struggling with life. People who had fallen on hard times and couldn't cope. Now we recognise today that people do suffer with mental health problems. And we treat people in a very different way. We help them. We help them deal with their feelings. And we help them lead a normal life. But that wasn't how it was. How was it when you were here? It's recorded that the treatments that were given were quite barbaric by today's standards. Electroshock therapy, even lobotomies where they would remove part of your brain thinking that somehow that would make you better. That must have been horrific. to be locked up and pretty much experimented on. Not many people came out. And the ones that did often came out on a trolley through these tunnels. Can you tell me were you one of those poor people who suffered and endured what went on above us? At this point, Static Cam 3 in the rear tunnel north is capturing footsteps. Here is the audio taken from Static Cam 3. So we're near to the, the back of the tunnel system. Right down the bottom at the end there is where Cox and Hargreaves, the optical lens manufacturers, used to work. And down this end at the bottom, just to the left, would have been the entrance uh, where the, the bodies would be brought down from the asylum. Um, we've also got a music box down there on the floor, which is facing that way. We've also got a motion detector light down there on the floor. We've also got a 360 monitor, um, which is sort of at the crossroads a bit further down. Uh, that's, uh, that's keeping an eye on four different ways in these tunnels. So. If anything moves, it will activate and a light will also show us the direction of the movement. And I must admit, with the time that Phil and I have been here, we haven't heard as much as what we did last time. I said we haven't heard as much, but it's been very, very quiet. Nothing like the last investigation all those years ago but obviously we don't know 
if we've captured any EVPs at this point. Or, again, what our static cams have captured. So, but also uh, back in uh, 1941, this, uh, this location was used as a shelter for the war. And obviously at that time, it was still used as the, the death tunnels from, uh, from the asylum. And that's, uh, that all stopped in 1992 when they closed down the Cane Hill Hospital. But there must have been a lot of people during the war coming in these tunnels. It's, it, it is a big place. So can I ask if you're anything to do with this place when it was used as a shelter during the war, could you do something to let us know please that you can hear us? Can you come and join us please? Come walking down towards my voice. And come and speak with us. Who was in charge here? during the war. On our static cam 3, which is filming us in the rear tunnel north where earlier we captured footsteps, the audio is now capturing movement and breathing. Here is the audio taken from the static cam, enhanced. Our next stop was where Cox and Hargreaves, the optical lens manufacturers, had their operations. This was the area on our last investigation where we filmed a shadow figure and caught several EVPs. Can anybody hear my voice? If you can, please make yourself known to us. When I was here last, you were able to move things and I believe you even showed yourself to us. So let me know you're here, either by shouting or by moving something again. Do it now. Did you work for the Cox and Hargreaves company? would have been a very unusual environment to work in, coming down through the tunnels. Obviously, it would have been well lit. A 
imagine it would have been quite noisy though with the um, equipment I mean just looking at what's lying around there's presses and drills and all kinds of tools and if you were working away it must have been quite noisy What was your role? Can you let me know that you can hear my voice? I almost get the impression, Jeff, that the is something quite close. I don't know why, and it's not something I feel very often, but... Are you standing? Watching us? Just hearing very faint, very faint noises from what I don't even know what's in what's in there, Jeff. It's the um, when we walk through there. Um, it's the, where the latrines are, and there's some other tools and mechanical um, parts in there. If you're down that, that tunnel down there, could you make a noise just to let me know you're there so I, I know where you are, please? On enhancing the digital recorder, you can hear movement coming from the tunnel next to Phil. And there is a response to Phil's question, a man's voice saying, now I'm here. Could you make a noise just to let me know you're there so I, I know where you are please? Could you make a noise just to let me know you're there so I, I know where you are, please? We move on to the main tunnel entrance where on the previous investigation here we caught an EVP of a child asking if we could hear them. So we've come back to this area which was where we captured the voice of a child who asked us can you hear me? Yes, we did hear you. We picked up your voice on this device So if you can, if you want to come and speak to us, if you see the red light, speak into the red light, it will capture your voice and then I can play it back, this device, and I can hear what you're saying.
So can, can you come and talk into the red light, please? Can I ask you what your name is? Please tell me your name. How have you ended up to be here? Was you a patient in the hospital? Now one way for you to get our attention is that uh, down several of the tunnels we've got some devices and if you go near them they will activate and that will let us know that you're here, that you're listening. Can you do that for us please? A child laughing is captured on our audio. Remember, we are the only two people inside these tunnels and there is only one way in and one way out which is covered by our static cam too. Also, to move around you would need a light source as it is pitch black and any movement inside these tunnels would be clearly heard so we know that we are alone. Here is the enhanced audio of the child laughing. And that will let us know that you're here, that you're listening. Can you do that for us, please? <laughs> and that will let us know that you're here, that you're listening. Can you do that for us, please? We end our investigation at the Cane Hill Death Tunnels. There are many spirits who stay within the tunnels and this location seems to be their home now that the asylum has gone forever.